Greetings, everybody. It's great to be back with you. Chris Adams here with Miles Partnership. Uh, we call this clarity in a time of change. We've moved beyond crisis to the re rebuilding phase. And with our very good friends at Longwoods International, and I'm joined by uh, Amir Elon, their president and CEO today, we're giving a quick update on the traveler sentiment. We've been doing this for uh, over 15 months, I think. Um, since uh, 2020, and I'm going to pass over to Amir to run through the latest research on how Americans are thinking about the recovery from COVID-19, and then I'll come back with you to share a few insights. Over to you, Amir. Oh, thank you, Chris. Uh, hello, everyone. Pleasure to be back. Yes, they're over 13 months already, Chris. Can you believe it? Uh, and the good news is I have almost all good news to share today. So uh, jumping right to the numbers, you can see that 86% of American travelers indicate to us that they have plans to go in the next six months. Uh, that represents the 70, seventh wave in a row of the survey. Uh, if you recall, it's bi-weekly every other week. Uh, we, uh, we were serving these American travelers and so seven, seven waves in a row. So basically the last three months, they have uh, indicated over 80% with plans to travel. We're flirting with that 90th percentile. So uh, things are looking good. When are they going? Let's take a look at that. And uh, it's, uh, there we go. Uh, and the next trip planned, you're looking at about almost half these trips taking place sometime in the next five months uh, there. But, but if you're looking comparatively, the biggest growth, the biggest jump we've seen is in the one to two months category. So you've got almost one quarter of American travelers that have plans to travel in the next 60 days, which is obviously coinciding right with the kickoff of summer travel season. So we are very encouraged to see that. Um, we are down to only 30%, less than one in three uh, American travelers telling us now that this pandemic will greatly impact their decision to travel in the next six months. You can see we're below half of where we were uh, just a year ago. So it's fantastic. Um, I still want to point out that uh, even though airfares are nudging up again and lodging, uh, depending on what part of the country, if you're looking at beach destinations, uh, rates, lodging rates have increased dramatically in the last uh, few months, uh, you'll see that concerns about one's personal financial situation impacting their ability to travel uh, still remains very, very low, consistently low. So again, uh, not a financial uh, question for travel. It's a question of how and when. And then we're looking at 54% of American travelers that are still changing their plans in some form or fashion due to the pandemic. It's still, while it's not keeping travelers away uh, as much as it was, it's still causing some changes in plans. And the patterns are the same. We're looking at one third choosing to drive versus flying at this point. Uh, we're looking at almost another third that uh, have abandoned their summer travel plans internationally and uh, have booked a domestic trip uh, there. Now, this one we have to watch because we've seen some news coming out of the EU in the last couple of days uh, that the EU is set to vote next week uh, uh, on a measure that would allow uh, non-essential travel, especially from the US, back into the country by as early as midsummer. So um, uh, we're, this is, we'll watch that one very carefully. Uh, and then you're looking at about a quarter that are reducing the number of trips they're taking. And the same amount are basically telling us that this pandemic is no longer influencing their travel plans, which is great. Uh, let's talk about the resident perspective though. 53%, so we're, you know, the fourth wave in a row, that's 50% or higher of American residents are telling us that they support opening up their communities and welcoming back those visitors. So again, we're very happy to see us crossing this 50% threshold, but that still tells us that almost half of your residents are not quite ready or a little bit leery of it still. So we have to keep that in mind. Um, but 60% do feel safe traveling outside their community uh, there. So that's a positive upward. But again, that's still 40% that are uh, not quite ready for that yet. And then uh, we're almost 50, almost 60%, 59% feel safe dining and shopping locally. Uh, and we all know that's, uh, that, that's an important uh, first step of everything. Uh, the vaccine, that almighty vaccine, we are seeing 27% at this point 
uh, that are of American travelers that are waiting to travel until they receive the vaccine. That's down about 10 points in just the past couple months. But of course, American travelers are getting vaccinated much higher than the rate of, um, of the average American adults uh, uh, in general, general population. So, so that's, uh, um, that, that's a direct reflection of that. And as you, again, also reflecting on that is the fact that almost 40 percent of travelers are now telling us that the vaccine has no, long, no longer has any impact on their plans. And so at the end, let's throw it over to Chris here and wrap us up. Yeah, so we're seeing <clears throat> continuing momentum, Amir. Um, and, uh, but those local issues, whether it's uh, feeling confident getting out dining and shopping or supporting the reopening of travel and tourism, I still think that's a critical issue that the industry needs to work on destinations, tourism businesses, and working with local community groups. Um, VFR road trips um, and the in international substitution, but that also highlights the fact that airlines, airline routes are going to need support to uh, recover. Um, and there's $8 billion in uh, support for uh, airports. So they've potentially got some money to actually throw into a recovery focus there. Um, and Americans, there's this pent up demand. We're clearly seeing strong return to bookings, but um, you know some hesitancy, some concerns around these health and safety issues. So it's critical to have a clear call to action, not necessarily discounting, but clear call to action and also clear consistent information about the health safety information to reduce the complexity and barriers. So wonderful you could be with us. Uh, please check out the resources both at Longwoods and on the Miles Partnership COVID-19 portal, Clarity in Time of Change, and we'll be with you again soon. Thank you.